Hello, this is Inside the Press Box with Sunil Sundaraj for the Everyday Fan Sports. Uh, I'm happy to be speaking with uh, Zoran Milic, uh, the head coach of the Montgomery High School varsity football team. Coach Milic, uh, thank you so much time for taking, uh, you know, for speaking to me uh, this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Sunil. This, uh, this is a great opportunity to you know, talk to you about our program, and I really appreciate you inviting me on. Hey, before we came on there, we had a long discussion. We talked about, you know, of course, uh, your success, you know, here with the program. You know, I said building it, you know, from uh, the ground up. Uh, you've done absolutely a tremendous job there at Montgomery High School. Uh, you know, heading into this season, uh, I, I guess I had to ask you right out of the bag. You're not that far away from, uh, of course, the 2021 regular season opener here, uh, Coach Millich. Uh, just what your impressions have been of this team and, uh, you know, what do you foresee, you know, said again for, for this upcoming year here? Well, you know, one thing, every year you get to start with a new team, even though you're yeah. returning both of the kids except for seniors, but it's never the same team. Um, we graduated a lot of seniors, so we came back with hardly any varsity starters. So it's a young, yeah. inexperienced team. Uh, but they're, you know, they're such a pleasure to coach. Like, they, they do what they're supposed to do. Um, the only thing they haven't done is gotten experience, right? And the only way yeah. you get experience by playing in the game. So, you know, my my perception of this team is, you know, as the season goes on, I think we're going to get a lot better as, as these guys become more varsity ready because we're asking them to come up from a JV. And I think we have three guys on, you know, three returning starters on offense and four on defense. And one of them is actually changing from corner to free, which is a different, really entirely different position in our scheme mm -hmm. of things. Um, we have a lot of new faces and a lot of eager faces, and, and uh, a lot of them are juniors. So uh, yeah. it's exciting to see how these guys, you know, develop as players. Yeah, there, are, there are a couple of guys, of course, uh, starting, I think, with uh, your quarterback, uh, Alex Benitez. If you want to talk about Alex and, you know, how much he's grown, you know, said, you know, in this program throughout the years, he's put up some really great numbers here. Uh, Coach Millich, can you just talk about Alex? Yeah, I, I mean, Alex uh, – Alex is really a running back, and the first play last year to open up the season, our starting quarterback dislocated his wrist on the second okay. play. Okay. And we really didn't have any other quarterbacks. We took our best athlete. Um, we put him back there. He's got a real strong arm. So one of the things that Alex did last year, which was, you know, which, which is a testament to him, he was able to throw the deep balls, um, but he struggled on the uh, shorter throws. And that's all mechanics, you know, your footwork, your timing, and, the things he really didn't practice that because he he'd been starting as a running back his freshman year. So um, this off season he's really worked on the shorter routes, the timing routes. Um, yes, he's got a big arm. I, you know, in the spring he threw the javelin 170 you know feet. He really doesn't practice it. Really, he just picks it up and throws yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like what he did with football last year as a quarterback he was just throwing it. Now now he has a much better understanding. Uh, you know, preseason, I, I think he's much more dangerous this year because, you know, he can beat you with his arm right now. And, you know, obviously he's always a threat to run. Yeah. You know, there are a couple more players. Uh, I think Brendan Fury, uh, Andre uh, Suleiman, uh, Mark Jenkins, Jalen McDaniel, David Walsh, Liam McManus, and Gabe uh, Acott. There are a couple more players there. Wanted to highlight. I said I. I think altogether, I think 13 seniors. I was counting I, on one of the sites on this uh, year's team. But uh, if you want to talk about some of the players uh, and if there are any that have uh, left out, coach, that you know you really point to as you know uh, being critical, you know, towards the success, you know, and having a winning record this year. All right. Um, well, let's start with uh, Brandon Fury. Brandon's okay. uh, center nose guard. He's committed to Marist already. Um, I know NJ.com listed him as uh, one of the top 10 offensive linemen. I think he's the 61st best or top player in the at top 75 or whatever in the state. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's an impact player on both sides of the ball. Uh, one of the things we were – I knew he'd be good at nose guard because he didn't play that position last year. But so far preseason, he, he's really good at it. I, you know, he's much better than I – I knew he was going to be good, but he's better than good. So, mm -hmm. uh, and is really the guy who's calling all the blocking schemes. Uh, he, he's pretty much, you know, the emotional leader there. Um, you know, we're, we, we, you know, like, just like Alex, we, we got to have, um, you know, Brandon on the field, uh, you know, without him, uh, you know, we, we lose a lot with him on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, coach. I was going to talk about Andre Sumi. Okay. Yeah, sure. Next, right. So, 
Um, Andre's an impact player at defensive end. He's, he's yeah. very difficult to block. Most people have to double team him. Um, he's looking at some places. You know, he, he's another guy looking at colleges at F, you know FCS. He is looking at West Point. Um, mm-hmm. But he, what we did with Andre, we've now moved him to what we call our quick guard, and and uh, he's done a great job with that. So you know, he, he's actually we thought he'd be good at it. He's he's better than what we thought he was going. You know, so far in the preseason, he's mm-hmm. another. Key He's such an impact player on defense, um, whereas, you know, Benitez is really, he's the offense. Everything stems from him. Defensively, you know, Andre Sumion sets the tone for our defense, especially on a, our defensive line. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, the other guy on the uh, yeah. defensive line, Jalen McDaniel, and Jalen's yeah. been a year starter. Um, Jalen's another guy between him, Brandon, and Andre. I, I think they make, you know, a great defensive line, one of the better defensive lines in the state, I, you know, public school wise, I would say. Um, you know, Jalen brings the speed and, and again, the veteran, you know, ability. He's been there for three years now. Uh, so those front three really kind of give us, you know, that's probably the strongest unit on our whole team is that defensive line. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I was looking at this schedule. Um, you know, of course, you know, at Washington Hills Regional on September 2nd, then followed by at Linden, Woodbridge home, then three, I think it's three consecutive road games, you know, coach at Colonia, at North Hunter, then at Franklin, you know, home to Scotch Plains, Fenwood, then uh, home to Kennedy uh, Memorial, and then at Cranford. So I guess you would just want to talk about, you know, how this uh, schedule, you know, pans out this season for you. <laughs> it's, it's very, you know, the very, Tough schedule, obviously. Yeah, we'll start with uh, you know, right now our biggest focus is Watering Hills. Yeah, you know, is on uh, September second at our place. It's a Thursday night. Okay. And the way I've always done it is, you know, if you start looking at the whole schedule, yeah, you can get overwhelmed. You start worrying about things that really aren't in your control. Yeah. The only thing we worry about, we try, you know, and, and I again, this is a great Shiano thing. We're playing one game season. Mm-hmm. Take care of what's in front of you. Okay. You, you can't worry about next week. Next week's next yeah. week. A lot of things can happen before September 2nd. So our focus right now has been, you know, really on us to get better. You know, after we have our game scrimmage, our focus 100% will be on watching Hills, okay? Um, right now our focus has been, you know, even in our scrimmages, it's been on us for us to get better. We can't worry yeah. about other things. We have to take care of ourselves. So cleaning up our mistakes, you know, from scrimmages in practice. Uh, we, we film every practice like mostly everyone else does. So we try to work that and go over the film before we even step out on the football field. And if we can improve from the day before, that's all we ask for. If we can do that, we're going to be in a good situation at some point of the season. Yeah. And I, I don't want to forget, of course, about your coaching staff as well. Uh, you know, I said your assistants there, uh, what they've meant to you. You know, I said I – I know this past year, you know, so before we came on the air, you know, this COVID-19 pandemic, how challenging it has been. I know for you personally, it said last season, you know, it said it was very difficult. If you want to talk about that, I was reading, I said you had to undergo emergency surgery, Coach Millich. I mean, can you talk about how good it is to, you know, here to get back, you know, of course, you know, to some sort of sense of normalcy here, you know, and hopefully having a full season here under your belt, uh, Coach Millich. Yeah, um, I can't say enough about my staff. Um, you know, Sean Carty, he's our offensive coordinator, and Brian Santanelli is our defensive coordinator. And I really don't have to look over their shoulders. I, I, you know, yeah. um, they are really professional in how they approach things. They're excellent teachers. Uh, they're both in our building, which helps as well, too. And the rest of my staff, you know, uh, basically everybody but two of the guys are, you know, are in the building. And one's right down the road, and one a former player of mine. So, uh, mm-hmm. like the rest of my staff, I have Chris Sima, who's in our social studies department with me, does a great job with our receivers and DBs. I got Mark Probaca, who's our head freshman coach. Mark's been a head coach. He's been an offensive coordinator for ours. He's down there with the freshmen because we really don't have a feeder system, um, which is really, you know, it's tough on our kids with the development standpoint. So Mark's down there because. He's a tremendous teacher, and, and, you know, he knows football. doesn't matter what offense, defense, uh, you know, I have him there. I got Joe Riccardi. He, he, again, he's in the building. He's running our JV program. Um, and, and I don't have to ask these guys to do anything. They do it. I have Danny Aguilar, former uh, offensive lineman, former all-conference player up at uh, Montclair State. 
Danny's our line coach. He runs the offense on JV. Again, he breaks down film. I, again, you know, these guys just go and do what they're supposed to do. I don't have to ask them to do it. Um, you know, I, I have a newcomer on the staff uh, in DJ McHugh, and, and uh, DJ's been awesome. He's been down there with the freshmen, uh, young guy. You know, all I heard was great things about him, and, and, you know, you don't have to ask him. He does it. So yeah. uh, all these guys on the staff, um, you know, all of them except for DJ were with me last year. And last year, um, I had to leave. I had an emergency situation, surgery situation. Mm-hmm. I was down for about a month. And really, Sean Carty took the lead of the program. Yeah. Did a tremendous job. Um, you know, they started out 0 2, lose opening night. Yeah. The Bills Road team playing his brother and his father, you know, coaching against them. <laughs> and then your starting quarterback, who's a good quarterback, dislocates his wrist on a second play. And now, you yeah. know, you want to talk about, uh, you know, reacting to things that weren't planned beforehand. You know, I'm mm-hmm. out, you know, the quarterback's out, and, and you know, then they had to play Phillipsburg the next week, and now they're 0-2, and, you know, and then they won two in a row. You know, by the time yeah. I came back, they were 2-2, two two, we routed the troops. So, these guys, when I was out, I didn't bother. it. Like, I, I needed to be, like, focused on my recovery, and I didn't need, you know, I, I stayed out of it basically for the most part. Sean Cardi would let me know certain things that were going on, and every now and then he would text me. But he ran, you know, those guys ran everything from, you know, and with all the COVID protocols, you know, we're, we're temperature testing. We, we got yeah. sheets every day. The bus, you know, you have a bus seating chart, uh, you know, mask, all, all those things. So uh, yeah. I'm really, really fortunate. I have a, a tremendous staff. So um, I couldn't ask for a better staff. Great guys, great teachers of the game. Um, and they're great for young men. So, you know, they are, they're a huge part of uh, what we do and, and what we're about. Yeah, they, I think it's so important. I mean, you see all the behind the scenes work uh, that goes into, you know, uh, again, ha- building that winning culture. And, you know, I think people tend to forget that how much, you know, the assistants, uh, coaches play, you know, that kind of pivotal, again, play that, you know, a role, you know, and again, you know, with the players and with, you know, breaking down film, there, there are so many components that go into it. But I, I didn't want to, Forget also, I, I was reading another procedure sign and coach uh, Millich that uh, I, I don't know if it's taking place already being inducted into the New Jersey uh, Coaches uh, at, uh, Association Hall of Fame. Uh, can you talk about what that means to you uh, personally, Coach Millich? Um, <laughs> that that probably means I've been doing this for 30 years. My <laughs> 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 baseball is like 1988. Uh, yeah, you know, I've done track and field which some kids called it spring football because we did a lot of lifting and yeah. training for speed and, and things of that nature. But, uh, you know, it, it was, it was definitely an honor. It was not something, um, you know, that I, I was looking forward to. It kind of caught me by surprise. Yeah. Um, but again, that's, that's because I've had great people around the great administration, great assistants and, and great kids. So, and that's not just in football, but that's in all the sports that I coach. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that, that was, you know, I'd, I'd rather not talk about myself as much as yeah. uh, players. And, but it, it was, I'm not going to tell you, it, you know, uh, it was disappointing. <laughs> you know, it was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was nice after so many years to kind of be recognized, uh, you know, for what we do uh, on a day-to-day and a year, year basis. No, that's a great job. Um, hey, you're, you're two years removed from an eight, uh, eight and two season. Uh, you know, I said, named, you know, Mid-State Conference, you know, Coach of the Year. Uh, that that was, uh, you know, I said, a, a special season as well, Coach. And you, you had to – you talk about court, the quarterback position. You had, you know, to work with two quarterbacks that season because your starter, you know, went down uh, in Ryan Fear. Can, can you talk about uh, what 2019, you know, meant to you? I mean, how, you know, how you know good of a year was that for Montgomery High School, uh, Coach Millich? Uh that year was awesome. We, you know, we expected to be pretty good. We, we had a lot of kids playing when they were younger and, you know, just, but you got to go out and do it. You know, and sometimes yeah. you, you, um, you know, you, you got to kind of go through some growing pains, which we did going into that season. And, yeah. uh, you know, but those guys turned it around. It, it was definitely, you know, a really enjoyable season. We had a lot of close misses the year before, which a lot of people didn't realize a lot of close games. Yeah. You know, we were at times we had a, you know, the year before, we had a freshman quarterback, we had a freshman running back in Benitez, and mm-hmm. you know, we had some young guys, and we had some bunch of sophomores out there that probably were asked to do stuff that maybe they weren't ready to do, and and uh, just to watch those guys work so hard in that offseason going into 2019, 
I mean, the weight room commitment. We had guys doing winter track, you know, most of them just to do the sprint workouts to get faster. Yeah. Um, you could just see the commitment from everyone, from the linemen to the receivers. Uh, you know, it, I think it would have been really disappointing had we not had a real good season with all the effort and experience that we came back with that year. So that, that was yeah. definitely, um, you know, something that we were proud of. I think we had won seven straight games at some point. Yeah. Record. So, you know, again, it was one week at a time. So that was definitely, um, you know, it, our program needed it at that point after going sub 500 for a few years there. Um, we needed to break out and that, that year definitely kind of got us back to where we wanted to be. Yeah, I mean, how good was that? I mean, to see that offense, I think I, I read the numbers. I think all average, what, 34 points per game. I mean, the fact that you were right up there, you know, I said, you know, you looked at teams like Somerville and then Hillside, I think that was undefeated in 2019, Coach. I mean, how, how good was it to be at that, you know, par at that level with those uh, programs as well? You know, again, we, we try not to compare ourselves with other yeah. programs. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's about, you know, and I know sometimes it sounds like coach speak, but really yeah. I can't concern myself with Hillside and Somerville. They're great programs. And yeah. But we got to take care of Montgomery. And, you know, so that's kind of what we focus on is, is us yeah. being a better. And one of the things, too, that we did that I'm pretty proud of, like when we got up on scores, we brought it a lot of times, we brought in our JVs like in the third quarter, like midway. Mm -hmm. We weren't hacking on extra points. And, you know, we probably could have averaged over 40 easily, you know, if we wanted to. But uh, two things come into, you know, it's not even the sportsmanship part of it, but it's yeah. also, like if I'm up and the game's comfortably in hand, if one of my starters gets hurt, that hurts us for next week. Yeah. Like that's a bad coaching decision. Also, it's a chance to get younger guys experience on a varsity stage in front of the student body under the lights, you know, instead of the last three minutes of a game, you know, where they're on mop up time and, you know, nobody's really paying attention. Half the student body is left. So I yeah. felt like, you know, that, that kind of set us up for the next year. Uh, unfortunately COVID hit, especially with our offense line, we were able to get a lot of guys, offensive line experience, you know, when we were up by some points, you know, keeping some of the skill guys around, but yeah. it allowed us to develop some guys. And I think that's what you always want to do, whether you're winning by a lot or if you're losing by a lot, you want to get, you know, you want to keep people healthy and you want to bring in other guys to get experience. And so that was kind of, you know, the way we looked at that year was, you know, let's keep ourselves healthy and let's get other guys experience hopefully for next year or, if somebody goes down, they have to step into that situation, and they've been there before. That's true. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask you, you before we came in there. You talked about building this program. You know, again from the scratch. I mean, you know, from freshman to JV, eventually to varsity. I'm wondering. I, I was looking at some of the numbers. I think you had two straight two win seasons, three losing seasons in a row. Uh, I'm wondering during those down times, during during those years when you know things were looking you know pretty bleak. But the fact, what did you learn from those years? And now eventually, you know, being able to come full circle and start, you know, again, uh, building that, that, that winning program and culture. I'm just, uh, I was just curious about that, Coach Millich. Yeah, it was, it was a little bit different, too, like recently, is we really don't have a feeder program. There's nothing that feeds us. Yeah. We don't have a top Warner. We don't have a P PAL, you know. Um, mm -hmm. We did back then. So we, we knew, like, you know, we were a smaller school when we first started, so you know, recently when you're sitting there and you're, you have a couple two win seasons and, um, you know, it, it, and, you know, a lot of what people didn't see in those seasons too was like, you know, Ryan Fuhrer starting quarterback went down to one year. We expected to be a playoff team before, yeah. you know, 2018. We had a lot of young kids. We had injuries, you know, opening night, my two starting running backs were gone. My quarterback was gone the next week. Um, you know, that, that's a lot, you know, and, yeah. and uh, so your whole offense is basically gone to start the season. Um, and we had a lot of close games, you know, so um, that was, you know, to me, you look at it that way, but, you know, people from the outside, you know, you are what you are, you know, what your record says you are, which is the old Bill Parcells. Yeah. You know, but um, you got to be realistic and see what's going on and, and realize, hey, there's some talented kids here. But you know, the, the other part was we just didn't have a feeder system. So you could sit there and say sometimes, you know, you can't always predict everything off the pop one or your youth program, but at least you're getting yeah. numbers. You're yeah. getting kids who've played before. You know, now we're out there recruiting kids and selling them on an idea um, who've never played football before. And quite frankly, this year we have 17 freshmen because I could not get down to the middle school due to COVID. 
you know, normally I go down there a couple times a year. I'm down at the lunch. I'm signing up eighth graders, talking to them. You know, sometimes maybe bringing some of our older guys down. Yeah. Uh, signing up seventh graders, too, who might be interested. So I always kind of had a pipeline. So when you don't have that pipeline going, um, mm-hmm. you get worried about it. You know, you're like, is, it, is yeah. this where it starts drying up? Um, you know, I, I'm just talking to some of the other schools, you know, how many freshmen you got? One school has 48, another one has 24, 20, you know, 32. We got 16 right now in camp. We're going to have another one and hopefully we'll get a couple more kids. But mm-hmm. the idea that we could not reach out to kids, you know, you can send all the emails you want, you know, to the kids, to the parents. You might have a mother who doesn't want them to play delete, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> never even get to play yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it was, you, you worry, but. You just keep working hard. I knew we had a good staff, and I knew we had a core group of kids coming up that were going to be – they were football kids. Everything came football first, and they played the other sports. And I'm a big – you know, play as many sports as you can, but sometimes we, we would have – you know, you look at it. We might have lacrosse kids first. We might have a basketball kid or baseball kid first. Football's yeah. on the back burner. Well, it's a tough sport to win in if football becomes the back burner for your athletes. And, and – yeah. That 2019 year, even 2018 going, we had a lot of football first kids. And uh, mm-hmm. here the injuries, you know, we, we had three ACLs. I mean, it was wow. a lot of a lot of fluky things, uh, you know, and, and kind of set us behind and, you know, but set up 2019. I, I really thought we would have had two good years in a row. And and uh, but and then 2020, we thought we were going to have a real good year. And, you know, with the COVID hit and some other things. And so, uh you know, now we look forward to now. Yeah. Hey, no, definitely. Just have a couple more, can't they, you know, for the time, Coach Milich. I don't want to forget, hey, you're just not a teacher on the field. You're a teacher off the field. You're a social studies teacher at Montgomery High School. Been doing that thing since 2002, I believe. Uh, yes. Also, the administration as well. Don't want to forget, you know, like AD, I think Chris Gundy, uh, Principal uh, Paul, I hope I'm, maybe you can pronounce, Pope, uh, you can pronounce, Okay. Uh, if you want to just talk about the administration, the support from them, you know, it, it just as far as being a, a teacher as well there at Montgomery High School. Yeah, what, what's really interesting, when we started that program back in 2000, uh, our principal, Paul Poppett, he, you know, when we started the program, he was our defensive coordinator. Okay. Chris Grundy, who was our boys basketball coach, when he, you know, he was on our staff, you know, when he first started out, and then he then he stopped to focus on being a head, you know, once he was named the head boys basketball coach. Yeah. Um, our upper middle school principal, Corey Delgado, was my freshman coach for many years. So a lot of the administration yeah. I coached with, and it was funny because I was their boss, and now um, you know, they're all my <laughs> boss. So, you know, it's a very supportive uh, administration. We have, yeah. you know, um, I, I can't say enough about our admin for all the years that I've been here. Hey, uh, talk about the support, of course, from the student body, uh, the town of Skillman, and then uh, just what is it uh, like on a Friday night lights, you know, at uh, Montgomery High School with the facilities there with the football field, uh, Coach Millich? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, you know, town almost shuts down, you know, where <laughs> not a ton to do in the town. You'd probably drive through it, you know, pretty quickly down 206 or 601. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Friday nights, you know, it, it's, it's awesome. You know, if the weather is good and we're good, that place is packed. It, it, it's a <laughs> phenomenal atmosphere. Um, you know, like I tell our guys, you want a great atmosphere, you guys got to go out there and win. You know, we, we got to we got we got to make a reason for the people to pay to come watch this place. So, uh, but it, yeah, it can be an awesome atmosphere. We get tremendous support there. It's great. You know, it's such a fascinating uh, background that you have, Coach Millich. And when I look at back, you know, of course, uh, you attended Somerville High School and then uh, coach there, of course. Uh, um, on the football team. But then at the same time, I think later on, you uh, were running, of course, the Montgomery High School baseball team as well. And I, I had to ask you about that, uh, just, you know, between both schools, but also working, you know, with, uh, you know, coaching another sport as well. Just, uh, you know, what, what what comes to your mind when you think back to those times, uh, Coach Millich? I was a young man with a lot of energy <laughs> back then. <laughs> um, now that was, the interesting thing was when I was coaching football at Somerville, but I was the head baseball coach at Montgomery. Yeah. And in the spring, I'd be coaching against the kids that I was, you know, that were my players in, in the uh, in the fall. You know, like so. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was interesting. It was funny. You know, we we would have a lot of jokes and bust each other's chops and stuff like that. And and yeah. uh, 
but yeah, now it, it, you know, it, it was, you know, baseball allowed me to become the football coach of Montgomery. You know, it, yeah. it, it's not successful in baseball. Um, they probably wouldn't have entrusted me with football. Plus, I was the only person really with football experience. I'd been coaching that summer all those years. And yeah, he at the time, Bernie Dembski asked me, you know, would I be interested? And he's like, you'll probably never win here. I'm like, absolutely, I'm interested. When do you get, you know, how often do you get a chance to start a program from scratch? From like yeah. your imagination. You know, a lot of times you go and you take over a program. It has its traditions. It has yeah. its history. And that's awesome, too. But when you kind of start something from scratch, um, it's more personal, maybe, to me. You know, the yeah. fact that it's been all, you know, I've been the only head coach that they've ever known for football. So, uh, you know, and all these guys that I'm coaching now, none of them were born, you know, when I first started the program. So, yeah. And some now I'm starting to coach some of the children of the fathers I even had at Somerville and places like that, you know, so um, means I've been around for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, you talked about tradition. What, what, what does that uh, Cougars jersey mean, you know, to you? You know, it, you know uh, I, I had to ask you about that, the Coach Milch. It's important is that tradition and that jersey. And then, of course, the helmet, too. What does yeah. that mean? To yeah. me, when I first, interesting thing. Yeah. When I first got to Montgomery for baseball, the first question everybody had, you know, when I go around, and especially, and, and again for football, going to football, yeah. and, I, and I always, you know, I always wear Montgomery gear. Yeah, it's a, you know, I try to create a brand. When I mm -hmm. first got there, it's like, where's Montgomery at? Well, you know, you have to sit there and say that's eh, right next to Princeton, we're South Somerset County, we got Hillsborough, yeah. and, and over the years, you know. It stopped being, you know, where's Montgomery? Now they, they kind of knew where it was. And I mean, for yeah. about five, six, seven years, it was, hey, we're right next to Princeton. And um, I think now when we talk about Montgomery, people know where Montgomery is. They know about us from all sports. But when I was first there, it was, you know, I always wore Montgomery pullovers. You know, with any any clinics I went to, wherever, you know, if, if it wasn't in football season at Somerville, I was wearing Montgomery gear outside of that, trying to create that brand, which we did for – for baseball and then um you know with football same thing you know that was a big question especially coming up to bergen county and and, and doing the old clinics up there with you know with, with uh, tony carsage was running it and mm -hmm. uh um uh, mike miello and and you know just going up there and people were like where's montgomery you know what you know we've just started the program where's that at you know and, yeah. and so to me like it's not just the jersey but it's just the program itself the you know People now know where, where we're at, and, you know, college coaches come through all the time now. We've had some real good players over the years. I think we've placed over 70, some 80 kids in college, um, yeah. which for a town that's really, quote-unquote, not supposed to be a football town. It's, you know, it's supposed to be more of a soccer town or something or a lacrosse town. But, you know, we've done pretty well with regard to that. And I think the biggest thing is we still have the same tradition. So when kids come back or, you know, they're young men now, they come back sometimes to visit. They kind of see the same stuff, you know, that they saw yeah. when they were young men the same age. So, you know, sometimes guys are coming 20 years later. And, and um, you know, besides me being older, you know, they, they see the same guy on the sideline. They see the same tradition, same, you know, pretty much the same pregame speeches as far as, you know, the fire and brimstone and that type of thing. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I think our, our Cougar family, if you will, like um, – People, people have pride. It, it meant something to them, and that's what means the most to me. Like, if kids can go in, I don't care how many touchdowns they score, whether they play in college or not, if they can have a special, you know, spot in their heart for it, like, hey, you know, I had a good time there. I met a lot of good friends. You know, uh, you know, I got pushed. I learned a lot of life lessons. It wasn't yeah. always easy. Um, you know, it taught me how to get through adversity. Not everything rolled my way. You know, I toughened up mentally. I persevered. Uh, you know, it's helped me in life. You know, I've had one kid, you know, Hey, you know, he's not even a kid anymore because I've never gotten late after, you know, you, you know, running me for being late to practice, suspending me this and that. He goes, now I just hear your voice yelling like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, those are some of the funny stories, but yeah. that, to me, it's, it's the people that have come through the program. Um, that's probably the most important thing to me. And, and just a lot that come back and stay in touch. Uh, that, that, that's the thing I, I enjoy the most. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's great. I don't want to forget also, uh, you went to Rutgers uh, University, preferred walk-on. I know uh, your career didn't end the way you wanted to, your football career, but uh, can you talk about your time there, you know, as a, and, you know, as a Scarlet Knight? Yeah, uh, you know, 
I went on, you know, I was a walk on, I had a back injury. Um, you realize at a certain point, um, two things happen when you get to a certain point. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you start getting to a level and you're like, you start looking at some other guys, right? And and I was a tight end and mm-hmm. kid in my class, James Jenkins ended up playing in the NFL for 10 years, won a you know, Super Bowl with the, uh, you know, Washington Redskins. And you start realizing, okay, as, as the pond gets bigger, you go from the pond to the lake to the ocean, you know, yeah. um, you start, you know, if you're realistic about you can work hard, but you start getting more realistic. Like that's coming easier to that person. <laughs> that person <laughs> that I got to really struggle to do well and put on that person doesn't have to do that part of the game is, you know, as much time they can focus on other things. Yeah. Um, when you get hurt, I think one of the frustrating things is as an athlete, you always want to, um, you always believe you can get better and you can accomplish things. But when you get hurt and you can't do things you used to do, yeah. that for me at that time where the realization was, um, I can't do the game at the level that I want to do it um, anymore. And I think that's always the toughest for me. It happened when I was like 19, 20 years old. So, um, yeah. It happened early, and then you know, but I, I loved my time there. I mean, I Dick yeah. Anderson, the the coach there. I met uh, Kevin Carty, he was our wide receiver coach there, and and um, you know, for one one spring too, um, and I, I, you know, Coach Flaherty, who was with the Giants for years, he was our tight ends coach. So I met a lot of great yeah. coaches, a lot of great people there, and a lot of my teammates, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. But you know, I, I think you start learning things. You know, you're, you're not, you know, you're not living at home and you start seeing things more realistic and where your path might be better. And, and uh, for me, I knew like football, it wasn't, you know, I, I, I tried to make a comeback and all the pain and everything that kind of went away after a year, after about, you know, two weeks in spring, you know, mm-hmm. and, and we weren't hitting each other as much as you would during the season. It was just coming back and I just say, you know, life's too long. I'm not going to the NFL. Mm-hmm. And there's some good people around me and there's, you know, and you always have younger guys coming up who are good too. So it, it's, right. uh, it's probably at that point, you know, it was best for me, for my health wise to, uh, step away. So I wasn't crippled. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm wondering, um, after of course, uh, uh, uh graduating from Rutgers, uh, what, you know, as far as like, you know, what, uh, your first, you know, coaching job and just what, how that all, you know, turned out, like how that panned out as far as, you know, getting, you know, that first coaching job. I was just wondering about that, Coach Millich. Yeah, um, that's interesting. I, I was coaching um, semi-pro baseball league, and I was kind of running it. And it started in 1988, then I became president like in 1990, 91. Okay. And uh, so I was really like into baseball. And ironically, I was filming the Somerville football games. I was like the videographer. Okay. Okay. So I did in the fall, you know, and I stuck around to see my younger brothers play and stuff. And then my high school coach says, you know, do you ever think about coaching? He was looking, you know, and that's how it started. 92, I think, was the first fall that I, I got to coach at Somerville. And, and I was with him for two years. And then they had a turnover in staff. And Coach Cardi came in. And I remember Coach Cardi from Rutgers. I always liked him. He was, you know, um, always such a personable guy and just a good man. And, um, you know, so I decided to stay with him and, you know, the rest is, his. He, he's been very helpful in my career, especially yeah. earlier. Um, uh, taught me a lot of football, taught me a lot of offensive football, spent a lot of time after practice, you know, sitting on a whiteboard and just, you ask him a question and, and he can sit there on a board on offense and talk for hours and, yeah. and sit there, you know, I, I was, you know, I was a young man and I had, had time, you know, so, <laughs> um, for him, instead of going home to his wife and his kids, who he was coaching, uh, he'd sit there an extra hour with me, and he would do that for many years and give me some yeah. advice and you know, look up some things, some books, and you know. So um, I was very great, and that's kind of you know. And I still was doing baseball in the summer, and then when the Montgomery baseball position opened up, you know, I did well coaching at football in a high school setting, and yeah. that's how. I Job. And the AD there was my former high school football coach. He was an assistant at the time. So that's how the connection came. And now I have Sean Carty, who I coach. He's now my offensive coordinator. So some people like joke around and say it's like Somerville South down there. We're south of Somerville. <laughs> Those guys there. So, uh, but that's how that, uh, that all started. And then, you know, when the football opportunity came about, uh, and then that's how I got into the building. I went from business to like, hey, I'm going to coach football. 
I need to be in the building because those college coaches come through. And for me to yeah. do a job with these kids, I got to be there. I can't have somebody yeah. else doing my job, if you will. You know, so. No, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Can't forget how important that role of being a student athlete is as well. Um, uh, you might have answered this uh, question before, Coach Mills, but for you, what makes the game of football, you know, so special and coaching it? Uh, I, I had to ask you that. I just, you know what? The one sport, okay? Yeah. That everybody can play. Like, you, you get people from everywhere. From You get, you know, rich kids, poor kids, different religions, everything. You know, sometimes we joke around. I'm not going to name the sports. But some sports are kind of specific. You have to have money, this and that. Um, I think football, what makes football unique is, number one, you really you come into the program. You don't have to, you don't have to pay for bats and, and sticks and all, you know, you just got to get cleats, right? And, um, yeah. you know, and it just, it takes kids who'd never be together. Like to me, when you're in gym class and you're younger, you know, your athletic kids, they get picked first. And then you have some of those kids who aren't picked and, you know, well, football, you know, you take uh, the thing that I love the most is you take those kids that are the offensive linemen and probably were never picked first or any of that stuff growing up. And now, those real cool, you know, cool kids, the athletic kids, they can't do anything unless those other kids block for them up. You know what I mean? <laughs> kids to see their self-esteem, they start lifting, they start transforming their body. Yeah. Um, you know, they they become an essential part. Now you got that kid, maybe the quarterback who maybe didn't talk to the kid in fifth grade or sixth grade. Now, hey, they're hanging out. Like, you know, they know, like, it has a role for everybody. You can be that short kid, okay, the small kid. Oh, maybe you can kick. Maybe you kick the game-winning field goal or extra point for us. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone thinks of football, you got to be big, big, big. No, you don't. It takes a lot of different body types. But I just think it brings everybody under one roof. And, you know, it's a physical sport. It's a mentally challenging sport. Um, and we all kind of go through it together. And um, I think, you know, if, if the world could be like a – football locker room we'd all you know it'd be a much better place you know and yeah. I think football challenges you all the time um yeah. you can't cheat in football and get away with it uh you can get away with not working out in some other sports you won't be as good but you can get away with football will expose you right everyone looks for the weak link um sometimes that's how life is right and, and so it, it forces you not to be the weak link it forces you to get off your rear end, not just once, but multiple times. And, and you're going to fail multiple times. And what kind of person are you going to be? And hopefully you can take those lessons from that football field when your career is done and when you go into real life. So you lose your job, but you have a family and you got to, what do you do? Uh, you know, sulk and pout the whole time, you know, quit. No, you, you got to go get another job. You got to go find, so you got to do something. It might be, you know, it might be, you got to get two other jobs to, equal the pay that you had before because that's what you have to do. You might be the kid who wants to play quarterback and you don't get the position. Now you go play another position to be a part of the team and help, you know, from that standpoint. Maybe you play now, maybe you're going to play some defensive back and maybe you're going to play some uh, tight end or something. You know, like now you're playing two positions to kind of equal that one big spot at quarterback. So I think yeah. it brings – that's what I love about football. I think it, it brings a lot of value – it challenges people because where do we challenge? We don't challenge them in the classroom. If a kid doesn't do well, you know, hey, they do retest this and that, right? We were always coddling kids. Um, I think football is a safer arena. Like if something goes wrong, you got to step up. You know, it's preached that you got to step up, right? You got yeah. coaches pushing you and stuff. So I think, you know, where can you challenge kids where they're going to see failure, but they can also see success? And you know, understand that failure is not permanent, you know, unless you make it permanent. Um, we need a lot of resiliency. And I think football teaches that more than any other sport because we're snapping a ball every whatever, 40 seconds or so. And there's going to be positives. There's going to be negatives, right? So um, if you're more on the positive, you're probably going to win, right? So if you're doing the right thing, you cause a penalty. You know, hey, you, you break a law in the world, you get arrested, whatever. There's a penalty for that. You, you hold on a play. There's a penalty for it, you know, a flag. You know, so you're hoping it's a little microcosm of, what the world is and people learn lessons. And the biggest thing to me is perseverance, right? Mm -hmm. and, and not giving up. So I think that's what football, and, and you do it in front of the biggest crowds, right? So you're out there in front of your 
you know, your family, your girlfriend, your student body, your friends and stuff like that. So, you know, you got to go out there and get the job. And there's times you're not going to look good, but that's all right. You know, get right back up and, and get it done. So that's what I love about football. I think it's the last sport that really brings everybody together. It brings the whole community together. Even yeah. people in the right? We got the band playing, right? So we got the band yeah. there. We got, you know, we have the cheerleaders, the dance team. We, we've got the student body, you know, uh, we have people around town, sometimes the mayor, you know, we've had the mayor come and other people like that. And mm-hmm. so I just think it's the one sport that can unite a community. And, you know, that locker room to me is sacred ground. Like, you know, you got to run it the right way. You can't have bullying and all that nonsense, but it's, it's a place where you get kids from. Nobody cares who your parent. When you're in that locker room, nobody cares who mom or dad is. Nobody cares what your religion is. Nobody cares your skin color, you know, or and your ethnicity. You're a teammate, right? And yeah. you don't see somebody that's a teammate. You, you keep you keep the area clean, right? You keep that area clean because it's your home. Uh, even though you're not related to these people, it's your home. Um, and so that's the thing I love about football. I think most other locker rooms, you're in there and you're out really quick. You spend a lot of time in that locker room when you're playing football. Just even changing takes a while, right? Putting yeah. on. The- um, so and, and some sometimes if the locker rooms run great. That might be some of the best memories for, for the for the players is you know some of those days in a locker room, right? Some funny things and guys just having a good time. So yeah. uh, that's a long winded answer, but that's- <laughs> uh, well, well said, well put, Coach. I, I really, I mean, you said you bring the knowledge to to the table and the experience. Um, you talked about family. I don't want to forget, you know, uh, the support you received from your uh, family. You know, said uh, through this, you know, uh, coaching journey. Yeah. I'm, uh, you know, my wife Susan uh, has been phenomenal. You we been married over 25 years. Um, you know, and, and you know, my son and daughter are out of high school and everything like that. But my family knows. You know, that was kind of one of the agreements of not coaching college uh, football was they wanted stability, and I get to do what I love to do. Yeah. Uh, and I'm home at the end of the night. You know, each night I'm home, and you know, and sometimes I'm home later. But um, you know, it, it'll. My, my wife has been phenomenal, like for all the coaching I do, and she's very supportive of it and very understanding. And so are my kids, you know, some of it I've coached my son, you know, for baseball and basketball when he was in fifth grade going through, you know, through eighth grade and stuff like that. But um, yeah, now, uh, you know, my wife is awesome with, with regard to that. Uh, she brought the stability to the household for the kids. And, you know, sometimes they joke that, you know, it's a single parent household at times when you've got those white <laughs> You know, I wish we had Zoom 20 years ago. <laughs> from home, right? And we're yeah. Family. Instead of, you know, we're at the field house or in a lot, you know, the coach yeah. office, you know, getting done at 1030, you know, by the time you drive home and stuff like that. And yeah. I think Zoom might have saved a lot of other marriages, you know. For, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know as long as staff, you can, you can do them at home. And, yeah. You know, and we do that with the players. Like when we review film a lot of times. You yeah. have to go home. You know, COVID kind of forced some better things to happen in all honesty. That's right. Um, and it's forced us to do some other things that, you know, maybe we didn't do in the past because we're so worried if we didn't do something, we wouldn't be successful. And I think COVID yeah. kind of showed that um, it's not always the case. You know, certain things you thought were so, like, non-negotiable and they couldn't be non-negotiable with COVID. And now you're like, kind of survive yeah you know um tim gashu of uh shawnee um they they had a covid situation last year they went up to um up to sparta and um you know sparta's very good shawnee's very good but shawnee's like we didn't see any tape of them except for the two-hour ride up there yeah. really not prepared because of the covid we just picked each other they probably had their best offensive game so they're like is that you know is, is, that, is that come back to the Allen Iverson? You know, we talking about practice. You know, like, <laughs> you know they score the most points, and, and uh, you know, the same probably could be said for Florida. You know, both yeah. teams scored a bunch, so like, uh, you know, where we thought, you know, if I don't get this, you know, we'd almost drive ourselves neurotic over things. If I don't have this, if I don't break this down, it's the end of the world, and you know, we have no chance. And um, that certainly wasn't the case, and I think we all learned that with COVID. But yeah, I wish we had Zoom uh, years ago. We would, you know, it'd have been nicer to, uh, you know, be at home, hit a button, 
go upstairs and you know and uh be there with the family or at least your family knows you're there you know that's so, true <laughs> working, you know so. <laughs> yeah no definitely hey um uh, questions i i I'm trying to zero on what the final question is, but I, I think um, I always probably try to end it with this. What um, your advice is to, um, of course, you know, younger kids and players and then even guys who want to break, you know, people who want to break into the coaching ranks as well uh, and be hopefully, you know, just as successful as, uh, as Coach Millich one day. Uh, what, uh, what, what, what's your message? You have to have a passion about whatever you do, not just coaching, but find something that doesn't feel like work and, and coaching does not feel like work. You know, for me, even teaching does not feel like work. Yeah. We have to do certain things, but yeah. if you can find something that you truly enjoy, um, I've enjoyed coaching and, and, you know, football has opened up a lot of opportunities for me, but I, you know, I enjoyed coaching track. I enjoyed coaching baseball. I still do, you know, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, the kid, you know, the idea of taking a kid from this level and taking them, you know, a, a higher level. Um, if you can convince a kid to do things that maybe they didn't think they could do. Um, but I think you have to have a passion. Don't get into this if you're all about the paycheck. Uh, it can't be about you, okay? It's about, you know, it's a journey, and it's about the kids. And, um, you know, if, if you're sitting there and it's all about you and your record and you're worried about that stuff, you're really not helping. You know, at the end of the day, you're not there for the kids. And, and sometimes we'll get guys that it's all about them and, you try to, you know, you hope we weed those guys out as soon as possible out of the profession. Yeah. Um, get guys that it's about the kids, you know, and at the end of the day, like I always tell youth coaches, when you've been coaching that kid, like Sunil, if you're coaching a kid back in sixth grade, Breck basketball, whatever, and now that kid's a junior or senior and he sees you and he's like, hey, coach, how you doing? You did a good job with that kid, regardless yeah. of what the record was or anything like that. The, the relationship you established with that kid. Um, yeah. It wasn't about you. It, that kid had a good time, and he's like, "Hey, coach." Now, if he walks by you, acts like he doesn't know you, you know, what'd you do? You know, like he, obviously you didn't make an impact. So I would say, you know, you're there for the kids, and we're fortunate. Like in Jersey, and a lot of the head coaches I know, we've got some great guys mm -hmm. um, about the kids, and you know, I think that's what I love about my football staff. It's always about the kids. If you're about yourself to promote yourself, you you won't last you know, a full season with us. Um, and that's my advice to younger guys. Just have a passion for it. It's not about you. If you take care of the kids, right, and it's about them, things, you know, at the end of the road, you know, 30 years down the road, whatever, you know, you'll, you'll be rewarded down the road. Yeah. You know, if it's about them. You're going to be rewarded better than any coach of the year or any record you might have at the end of the day. So that would be my advice. You know, have a passion for it, and it's about the kids first. Yeah. Okay, uh, Coach Milch, uh, always end, uh, the, you know, I said, uh, here's the platform. You got the last word. Uh, if there's anything I've left out here, uh, I, I, I don't know, I uh, almost admitted, you know, I said also you were the vice president, I believe, the New Jersey Football Coaches Association. Uh, that, that was another, you know, said uh, big responsibility as well. I'm actually the president. Just started. In July. Oh, congratulations! Okay, so here we are. I'm glad I got that in the last, uh, right here. So, if you want to talk about that, Coach Millich. Well, you know, John Jacob, our commissioner, uh, he yeah. really he's done a phenomenal job. I just, you yeah. know, as president, my job is to run the meetings and support him as, as much as yeah. possible. Get you know, get information out to any coach that might have a question or anything like that. I've been part of the executive committee, but I think you know what we've been doing with our executive committee working, you know, with the NJSIA. Uh, obviously, we have a state championship starting next year. We've re, re, we really revamped a lot of things yeah. that had failed in years past. And I think, you know, our executive committee and John Jacob in particular, you know, uh, and I know you know Jake's and, and uh, you know, he, he uh, yeah. done a phenomenal job really to, to take our organization to another level. And, you know, like I got told him as, as, the, as the president, I'm there to support him and I don't want to mess anything up, you know, like it's a great space and, and we were having a great effect on, you know, high school football and, and you know, the NJSI relies on our association, which is great. We're working in a partnership and um, hopefully we can continue that. And, and, you know, if I can help any coaches or any programs, uh, you know, we just want to make football better for, for the state of New Jersey. So um, yeah. that's my main goal there. Yeah. I mean, to see it, 
how far New Jersey football is coming. We talk about the state championship games, bowl championships at MetLife Stadium, uh, SHI Stadium on the campus of Rutgers University. Even in the past years, you know, of course, uh, even at uh, Kane University and, uh, I mean, other uh, places. I mean, it's great to see, like, you know, come, you look at the other states. I mean, you know, of course, there's Florida, there's Texas, California, but New Jersey is right up there, uh, Coach Millich. Yeah, for a little state where we're, we've got some great football players and some great coaches state you know i remember when i first started you could out coach some teams and you're like all right well, well you can't do that anymore you know yeah. especially you know everybody every, all these coaches are working these head coaches their assistants uh i saw that change in the last you know 25 years yeah. you know where you know you felt like you had an advantage going in and you no longer have that advantage in most cases and and uh so that that's kind of you know i think it's better for the players you know makes it safer it also puts them in a better uh, position, but yeah, I, I yeah. think our I we've seen our association just get so much better. Like the the coaching has gotten so much better. So yeah, yeah, those days of just oh, we'll out scheme they might be better. Yeah. Well, those days are gone. So yeah. or you worry about getting out schemed now. So. <laughs> so. All right, Coach Millich, here it goes again. Uh, last word. If, if there's anything I left out, yeah, no, you're more than. I just want to thank you getting a chance to uh, represent Montgomery High School. I know you guys, you know, you're up there in North Jersey and stuff, but, um, you know, it's always a pleasure. love going up to North Jersey, Bergen County, some great people up there. Yeah. But thank you so much for uh, inviting me on your show. Hey, Coach Millich, again, an incredible honor and privilege, you know, interviewing you, uh, wishing you, uh, the rest of the coaching staff and players at Montgomery High School and the varsity football team all the best uh, in the 2021 season. Thank you, Samantha.